Today we are off to Miami to spend a day with a Lamborghini Urus. The vehicle is being provided courtesy of Miami Luxury Cars. Check them out at MiamiLuxury.net. Really excited to try out the world's first true super SUV. I'm uh, going to spend a day with it and see what it's like. All right, we've arrived in Fort Lauderdale, picked up our luggage. Now time to go meet the car. Check it out. There's the Urus. Dang. So we've got luggage, which is why we're using this, because it'll fit everything. <laughs> All right, then, you guys, Miami Luxury. Miami Luxury cars. We've got the Urus. Everything's going to fit in the back of this, which the Huracan will not store. Exactly. We've got our luggage. We're going to be filming this and spending the day with the car. Yep. Sweet. So we left the airport, just pulled into a random hotel parking lot just to take a look at the car, get everything set up. Um, wanted to get out of the airport because they yell at you for parking there. But here it is, a brand new Lamborghini Urus, the world's first super SUV. Again, Miami luxury cars provided this thing. They have two of them. This one is the gray one. They have a black one too. Look at those orange brake calipers. 10 piston, the world's largest front rotors carbon ceramics oh yeah they are gigantic what size wheels does this one have this one's on the 23s the optional upgrade 23 inch wheels oh my god what do you think helen do you like it <laughs> pretty cool isn't it it's quick man i did a did a little pull in a tunnel wow press so far um got to figure out all the crazy shifter stuff going on here i'm gonna set up my little phone mount um, i'm gonna put a radar in and then we're gonna keep driving it around this is going to be, what is it like to live with a Lamborghini Urus? This is uh, the most expensive SUV I think I've ever driven. Although I've driven a Bentayga. Anyways, practicality. This is why we chose this instead of the Huracan Miami luxury cars. Also has like a 488 Spider and Coupe because none of our luggage would all fit in that. So that's, I mean, this is, it's not, it's not going to be like Range Rover practicality or X5, but this fit like two suitcases, a couple backpacks. We're good to go. All right, get in the car. I'm going to set up some stuff and we'll continue on. So I brought my radar detector with me because 600 plus horsepower Lamborghini, I'm trying to find where to plug it in. All the way back here, underneath the center console, we've got a 12 volt point right there, and Helen, is there one on that side? Yeah, how do I? Like, Just pull the, pull the little center piece out, and then we'll plug oh. this in. Yeah, there you go. So it's under underneath behind this screen. It is getting warm. All right, we'll start the car up. Flick the little fighter jet inspired toggle switch at all like Lambos have now. Start button. Good? Yeah, it sounds, I will say initial impression that sounds kind of Audi because it's an Audi engine, but oh, that beeping noise is also a complete Audi, I think. Whoopsies. No soft closed doors. Those details, yeah, all the hexagons, very much Lamborghini thing. This interior is very nice. Is it like real wood? This is, looks like, yeah, open, open grain wood. It's not like all veneered. Yeah, it should be. I mean, in a car of this price, the double screens that I believe are sourced from the new A8. It kind of looks like virtual cockpit with the Lamborghini thing on it, but they all have that now. All right, let me get the radar set up. Okay, the whole point of a Lamborghini SUV is for it to be more practical, right? But apparently, they missed the memo here in the center console. It's tiny. Look, this is this is the escort thing for my radar detector. It, it doesn't it doesn't fit. Whoa! It's it's getting angry. We're not going anywhere. A cop just drove by a minute ago. Oh really? So that won't fit in there. We'll just put it in the back seat for now. Does this come down? This does not. That's one piece there. It looks like butt cheeks. Yeah. It's because they go forward individually, Helen. <laughs> so you can think. Um, all right, let's keep looking around here. There's a lot going on. So this is the, this is the Tabia? Tamburo? Tamburo? This is, there's so many names for what you call them. This is pretty much changing the modes. Strada, Street, Sport, Corsa, Race, and then you got Sand, Gravel, and I think this is Snow. I don't speak Italian, um, but I think that's the mode. Here we've got Ego, which is not representative of Lamborghini owners. Um, Interior, look at that beautiful touchscreen, steering wheel. Everything feels very nice. I really like this interior combo. Got the little B and O tweeters that pop up. All right, let's get everything set up, get back on the road, and see more of what it's like to drive and live with the Lamborghini Urus. First impressions: it's really fast. Um, sounds pretty good, especially when you up it into like Corsa mode with the exhaust, and uh, I like it. Yes, panoramic sunroof. Also, went over a speed bump and did not have to cringe. In the Lamborghini, I can go over speed bumps and not like clench. So that's nice too. <laughs> Alright, let's see what Corsa mode feels like. Oh, we're just making a U turn. Okay. Well, I mean, I thought you were going for a turn. <laughs> well, that's quick. <laughs> Why'd you only open my window? I open both the windows. Now my hair looks like this. I open both the windows. That is a 
mountain of torque. Oh my God. Wow, I like it. First turbocharged Lamborghini from the factory. I'm not complaining so far. All right, now we're on the street, Can cruise. So this thing here changes your modes, as I mentioned earlier. You can only go down, so I just want to actually sand mode, but if you hold it, it jumps back to street, strata, um, regardless of which one you're in. Otherwise, you have to cycle clicking through all the way, but I think the way it works then, if you're in Corsa, you want to skip going to sand and gravel, just hold it and it jumps back to street. We're cruising street because we're going to be on the freeway for a little bit. Let's see how it goes. One of the best dealers in all of Florida has got to be Prestige Imports, Lamborghini, Miami, Pagani. So brought the Urus here. We really want to see the showroom. First time ever coming here. We just parked it here. We're going to go walk in and see. Just look at the outside lot. Like casual Rolls Royces, Lambos everywhere. They got crazier stuff inside. We're in the Lamborghini Miami showroom. We've got another Urus here. This beautiful specced Huracan Performante. Event store S's, roads, convertibles, spiders, oh my god. And this is not even the craziest side of the showroom. We'll go to the other side, they've got even more insane stuff. It's got some nice aftermarket carbon on it, looks like. Man, another, is that a Performante spider or just a coupe? I don't know, there's tons of stuff here. Wow. Alright, get ready for the crazier side of Prestige Imports. Got the Final Edition Wire Coupe. Look at that giant roof scoop. Big wing, titanium exhausts, Wyra, the Ultimo, the Ultimo, final, I think it's the final one or something like that. Got ourselves a Zonda F, which is absolutely in, insane and amazing to see a Zonda. This is crazy. Oh my god. A Pagani Zonda. Look at that giant AMG sourced V12. Jeez. And then. Got ourselves a toys on the chinke. We've got another wire, another wire coupe. These yellow accents are really cool. Just look at the exposed carbon though, the way the weave lines up on the Paganis. And then this is how you open up panels and things like that. It's got these little straps or like watch bracelets almost, the crazy wing mirrors. Another wire coupe. So I'll stick it up for Gumball 3000. The doors. We got ourselves a wire roadster. My first time seeing a wire roadster in person again. The exposed carbon that lines up on every panel. The beautiful Pagani interiors. The what? That's the one I can afford. This is the this is the Pagani I can afford, but it's the one that I can't fit in. So <laughs> unfortunate wire coupe. And then we got ourselves a couple 918s. We got the first one here, 918 number one. We got a Chantenario, formerly owned by Hawaii Brad, I think. Seen this car a couple times out at Car Week two years ago. That's amazing. Lamborghini Centenario. The what? The paint is beautiful. Yes. Probably cost more than my R8 did. The paint, not the, the car, obviously did, but the paint probably cost more. Crazy diffuser. We have ourselves a brand new Aventador SVJ, finished in factory matte white paint. I was talking to a sales guy earlier. He said. The SVJ letters here are actually painted in. They're not like sticker decals, they're painted on. Wow, this looks really good in the matte white. Look at all the carbon fiber. Lamborghini ALA, the active aero. Wow. And then it looks like we have ourselves a Aston Zagato right there. Casual, La Ferrari. La Ferrari, vehicle has been sold. Congrats to the new owner. We have a couple Bugatti Veyrons. One over here, another white one over there. F12 TDF. Looks like the Karma is alive again. Essentially, the it's the Fisker Karma, but version 2.0. Look at this TDF. It's crazy when you go to a showroom and the TDF is not the most expensive car there. It's one of the normal-ish cars. And then, oh, we have ourselves a Koenigsegg, owned by Lamborghini KS. Agera XS. Oh my god, I've never seen this car before. It's, I don't think it's, I haven't seen it in Monterey Car Week at all, but down in Miami, this paint is gorgeous. The mega car. Look at the giant fixed, the giant wing out back. Holy crap. Holy crap. And then there's, there's another Wyra Coupe over here. Hello. Oh, this one's nice. I like this red. Red over the tan interior. Jeez, got Countach there. I mean, like, 
I'm like glossing over casual supercars. Those are brand new GT2 RS down there, and then a couple GT3 RSs, 991.2s. Jeez, this is this is car heaven for a dealership. Get the turntable over there. I put a McLaren on there. It's really cool to see the videos they post when uh, Prestige has a crazy hypercar on here. Ooh, this one looks like it's a like a satin white finish on the McLaren. Oh my God, we just walked in. So they just started up the coating seg. Holy crap. Gera XS. I am here with Johnny Lieberman from Motor Trend, and he's driving a coating set. I usually get paid for this, but yeah, yeah how you doing? <laughs> All good, Thanks, Eddie? Johnny. Yep, yeah, thank yeah, you very much. I don't get paid that much. <laughs> Holy crap. Algera XS. Yeah. Utterly insane. Codex egg. Before we hop in, let's do one more quick walk around of the car. So again, this is the top end 23 inch wheels. They are gigantic. So as a result, the car doesn't ride the most smooth. It is based off the MLB Evo architecture. So uh, shared with like the Cayenne, uh, Bentega and such. Look at those, <laughs> those wheels are gigantic. When you park it, it's got all the sensors and everything. So it's not that hard. It's not insanely enormous. It looks crazy. I mean, parked here, it fits in perfectly with the Aventador sitting right next to it. You kind of see the family resemblance between the two of them. Quad exhaust tips. Oh, geez. All right, let's check out the back seat space. Can I fit in the back seat of a Nurus? I remember reading somewhere the front seats are designed for somebody who's six foot seven. And wow, this is actually, I got plenty of headroom. The Eddie test. It's actually the Eddie, Eddie headroom test. So I'm six foot three and I've still got headroom in the back of an Urus despite kind of the seats going down. I've got. Plenty of legroom back here too. This is uh, this is not bad. Copy. Obviously, you fit, Helen. You fit in the back of the i8. <laughs> I wanted to test the comfort. And then the trunk back there. There's still a little space, but if you, as you can see from this angle, imagine a rear view mirror too. Visibility out that back window isn't amazing because it's so sloped in the back and it's angled and it's a smaller opening. It's kind of hard to see out the back. It's not the best. Uh, a bug just flew Runner. in here. A bug just flew in. Oh no! Panoramic sunroof. This is. Definitely the most luxurious Lamborghini ever made, I think. Oh, they're mating. The B and O. There's bugs mating in the car. Yeah. Get out of my Lambo! quick grabs it is a four liter twin turbo v8 so it will not scream like an aventador will it won't sound like a huracan naturally aspirated up to those crazy rpms but sounds not bad it's in full uh corsa mode right now so doesn't sound like a lamborghini would you would expect it to sound but it still sounds pretty aggressive and mean we have the updated lamborghini key it's different from the previous one i think this still might be shared with audi but it's slightly different it's thinner a little bit longer here it says lamborghini on the back it feels lighter than the old one that I actually like the old Lambo key, even though it was exactly interchangeable with an Audi key. Like I said earlier, the screens look like they're pulled from the A8 climate control. You get a little bit of a, like a vibration click when you touch the touch screen. So it's not purely just only a screen. Oh, Turn to AC, a little bit of haptic going on. This is the start button. You pull this, you're in reverse right now. Oh. Push that button for park and then Pull the right paddle to go in the drive. So I'm in drive now. Uh, I'll go back in the park. Look at the screen here. So the center screen looks like Audi source virtual cockpit, but it's the graphics are amazing. It's got the Lamborghini everything over it. So we'll go into street mode. This is Strata. That's what the screen looks like there. Go down one. You go into sport. It changes up. You got some like G-force meters going on. 
tachometer looks a little cooler. And then if you go all the way into full Corsa, all your safety system stuff gets disabled. Precognition emergency braking is off. It uh, changes to even more aggressive mode. And through each mode, it sounds better and louder. The paddle shifters here are fixed onto the wheel. They're not column mounted like you would find in the Huracan. Um, the upshift responses are pretty good in full Corsa mode. I'm actually a little bit disappointed that the, the downshifts aren't quite that crisp. They feel a little laggy almost. Um, even in full Corsa mode, it is a eight-speed automatic source torque converter. But as far as living with this car so far, we cruised about half an hour on the freeway and some surface streets going through some neighborhoods. It's comfortable. It is the most comfortable I have ever been in a Lamborghini badge vehicle. Visibility is good enough. It's not like compared to like a like a true true like normal SUV. The windows are a little bit um, smaller and thinner, so it's a little harder to see out of. But you have all the tech features, all the modern luxury things. It has adaptive cruise control. This is a Lamborghini with adaptive cruise control. Uh, it's got the parking cameras all the way. You got the surround view right there. You can see um, I'm in the spot. Um, I didn't want to get too close to that curb. It's spacious enough, the interior is very nice, the sound system is great. This has the uh, bench seat across. You can't option it with just bucket seats around back. But I'd say overall, so far, living with the Lamborghini Urus, I like it a lot. It's truly a Lamborghini you can use every single day. What do you think, Helen? Do you like, would you want to live with the Lamborghini Urus? Sure. Sure. <laughs> Easy to please, sure. Um, but yeah, it's. I went over a speed bump and up ramps and things like that without freaking out about it. It is on 23 inch wheels, which are ginormous. But yes, let's uh, let's keep going. I'll keep playing with it. I will be filming. I'll try to do a full review. I don't have endless time today, but we'll try to do a full review of this thing. We shall continue exploring what it's like to live with a Lamborghini SUV. So there we go. That is what it's like to live with a Lamborghini Urus for a day. I mean, this thing has been, I loved it. It's been pretty badass. It's fast. Did a review with it. It's a lot of fun. It puts a huge smile on my face. It looks pretty cool. But part of that might be because I had the keys to a Lamborghini and why would I not be happy about having the keys to a Lamborghini? Uh, make sure you check out Miami Luxury Cars. They provided this vehicle. They've got two of these Uruses. They've got Huracan Spider 488s. Uh, and I mean, next time I'm in Miami, I definitely would rent a car from them because this has been a ton of fun. And the thing is, the Urus is practical enough where we'd be able to fit all our luggage in the back. If you had a bigger group of people, you could take one of these out instead of a Huracan, which will fit like, I don't know, a tote bag full of like clothes. And that's pretty much it in that tiny front trunk. This has been awesome. Hope you guys like this video. Make sure you check out the full review of this car that I did. Thanks for watching.